Hi everybody, welcome to our vodcast on photosynthesis in the leaf. In this vodcast, what we're going to discuss is the process of photosynthesis in terms of the reactants that are involved and the products that are made. And then in addition to that, we're going to discuss how the leaf is actually structured to carry out photosynthesis. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. So first, let's talk about the chemical equation for photosynthesis. When we take a look at the chemical equation for photosynthesis, you'll see on the left-hand side of the arrow, you have what are called your reactants. These are the raw materials that are going to be reacted together to produce the materials on the right side of the arrow called the products. So our reactants for photosynthesis include six molecules of water, six molecules of carbon dioxide gas, and then also solar energy or sunlight. Once you mix those three or get those three reactants together inside the chloroplast of a plant, which is where photosynthesis actually happens, then you're going to get two products that are made. The products that are produced are one molecule of glucose, typically written as C6H12O6, so that big molecule is the sugar, and then also six molecules of oxygen. So this is the formula for photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis primarily occurs in the leaves of a plant. And if you take a look at a leaf and where it's positioned in a plant, it kind of makes a lot of sense. So why don't we just break that down for a second. Okay, so here we have a photograph of a tree. All right, it's a pretty basic photograph. And you'll notice that the leaves are the green organs or the green structures at the top of the tree. All right, the reason why the leaves are at the top of the tree is because they're designed to catch sunlight. So what better place to be on a tree to catch sunlight than near the top or just way off the ground. When we take a look at the structure of a single leaf, you'll notice that it's broad and flat. So that's kind of like nature's solar panel. It's like the original solar panel. Okay, it's broad and flat, so this way they can be supported. Their broad sizes are going to cover enough area to maximize the amount of sunlight that it can absorb. So when we take a look at those adaptations or those features, leaves are the perfect solar panels to carry this job out. Now, when we take a look at these leaves, they don't look like much because when you pick one up, it's pretty thin, it's pretty light, and it doesn't look like it has a lot going on other than having veins running through it. But if we take a leaf and we slice it in half and take a look at what it looks like on the inside, there's actually a lot going on. So this is our leaf cross-section right here. And when you take a look at the leaf cross-section, it has a lot of layers. So why don't we start taking a look at the layers and their functions? All right, so the first layer we're gonna talk about is the cuticle. The cuticle is this thin layer at the top of the leaf, and this is a layer of wax. So when you take a look at this picture of this group of leaves here, you'll notice that the majority of the leaves in the background are dark green and they're kind of shiny. And this one leaf in the middle of the picture is kind of flipped over and it's lighter in color, almost like a white slash green, a lot less shiny than the top part of the leaves. So you'll notice that the cuticle resides on the top part of the leaf. And the job of the cuticle is to prevent water from being evaporated or water from being lost inside the leaf. So that makes sense because when we talk about evaporation, water rises into the atmosphere and towards the sun. So the cuticle is on the top to trap that in there. So that's our first layer of the leaf. When you take a look underneath the cuticle, you have a layer called the upper epidermis. And on the bottom of the leaf, there's a layer called the lower epidermis. Now, the upper epidermis, its main job, too, is just like the cuticle, is to prevent water loss because, again, as we said before, water is a reactant for photosynthesis. And the lower epidermis down here does that as well. However, it has these structures called stomata. Stomata are super important in that these are openings inside of, these are openings at the bottom of the leaf. And because there are openings at the bottom of the leaf, that means things can get in and things can get out. So stomata are actually controlled by two cells called guard cells. Now, if we take a closer look at the stomata, you'll see that you have one that's closed up and one that is opened here. So this stomata is open, so this is going to allow things to pass through. What's going to happen is what you're going to have what's called gas exchange. Basically, you're going to trade off gases. Like if you were exchanging phone numbers with someone, you would give your phone number to that person and then they would give you theirs. So you exchange contact information, phone numbers or whatever. In gas exchange, we're going to have a trade off of gases. So plants want carbon dioxide. So the stomata is going to allow carbon dioxide to enter the leaf. 
okay? And the guard cells are going to open up this stomata to allow that passage to happen. So think about guard cells being like guards at a door. They're going to stop you or they're going to let you pass. All right, so the guard cells will let the gas of carbon dioxide move into the leaf. However, because of diffusion, oxygen is going to diffuse out of the leaf. So there's our gas exchange. We have carbon dioxide going in, oxygen coming out. And also water vapor leaves too, if you remember transpiration from the water cycle. Okay, so guard cells control the stomata by opening or closing them. And then the stomata are just the openings that allow for gas exchange. And that's what you see here in this diagram with the stomata. So there's your gas exchange. Now, once you get through your epidermal layers, you get to this layer in the middle called the mesophyll. Okay, the mesophyll is actually broken up into two layers. You have what's called the palisades mesophyll, and you have what's called the spongy mesophyll. All right, the palisades mesophyll is located at the top, and it's basically a densely packed layer of elongated or longer cells that are filled with chloroplasts. So you have these cells that are located at the top of the leaf where the sun's striking, and there's a lot of cells here with a lot of chloroplasts. So the palisades mesophyll's function is primarily to carry out the majority of photosynthesis inside the leaf. All right, so that's your palisades function. Below it, you have what's called the spongy mesophyll. Now, the spongy mesophyll is called that because it has air pockets inside of it. So because it has the air pockets inside of it, this is going to allow space for gases to move on through. And allowing the passage of the gases to get from the bottom of the leaf to the top is important because, as we said, the Palisades mesophyll is carrying out the majority of the photosynthesis and you need that carbon dioxide gas. So even though you do have some chloroplasts, like here's a mesophyll cell from a spongy layer, these will carry out some photosynthesis too, but the majority of the photosynthesis will be carried out in the Palisades mesophyll. So your spongy layer just allows this, the diffusion of gases to travel throughout the leaf. So oxygen moves through the spongy layer and out of the stomata, out of the leaf, while carbon dioxide moves in through the stomata, through the spongy layer, up to the palisades layer for photosynthesis. Now, if you take a look, you see this purple structure here called a vein. Leaves have veins because they have to transport materials throughout the leaf and the branches and the roots and the stems and so forth. Much like how your body has veins or vessels to transport blood throughout your body. Okay, so we have actually two types of veins inside the leaf and let's take a close look at them okay so what we're looking at here is actually a real cross section of a leaf that you would see under a microscope so let's kind of review the layers that we've talked about first your top layer of cells here is your epidermis okay and then you have your lower epidermis down at the bottom at the bottom on the lower epidermis if we zoom in here you'll notice that there's a gap in between the cells Here's one guard cell, here's another guard cell, and they've opened the stomata. So that space or that opening is your stomata. This layer of long, densely packed cells, this is your palisades layer. And as you can see below it, you have another layer of cells that have a lot of air spaces and gaps in between. So this is your spongy mesophyll or spongy layer. But in this area, you've got your vascular bundle. And the vascular bundle is just basically the bundle of the vessels that are in the plant. So this is where you're going to find your two veins. First vein that we're going to talk about is your xylem. Okay, so you have the xylem here to transport water into the leaf. Because remember, we got the sunlight striking through the epidermis. We have carbon dioxide diffusing through the leaf, but we have to transport the water there for photosynthesis. And that's how the water gets here. In addition to that, we have vessels called phloem. Okay, phloem are your food vessels. Remember that. Phloem, food. Because what will happen is after photosynthesis is made and that glucose is produced, the rest of the plant needs to get the glucose to carry out cell respiration. So those molecules of glucose need to be transported. So the phloem are the vessels that are going to take that glucose out of the leaves and then transport it down the stem to give the cells in the stem food for cell respiration and then down into the roots for the same thing. Okay, so essentially the leaf is perfectly adapted for this. All right, everybody, that's our video on photosynthesis in the leaf. Thank you for your time.